going to start recording. So may God bless you all. It's Nancy Alfaro here with Whip of Wisdom Ministries. And today I bring a word calling, called the heartbeat of God. So this message actually started last week. And last week I couldn't have my class um, because I wasn't feeling good. And last week I was diagnosed what is called cardiac arrhythmia. And actually, you know, I discovered it has been happening to me for a couple of months, but I didn't know what was causing me the discomfort. So I needed to go to the expert in the matters of the heart to be able for them to discern and guide me on the perfect diagnosis. And they connect me, you know, to this machine that basically can read the waves of your heart. And without a doubt, they were able to confirm that my heart was jumping in and out of rhythm. It was getting out of rhythm. So they started me on a treatment last week. And I, I'm telling you that within hours, um, I felt like I was born again. And it was amazing to me how a racing heart can make your whole body so weak. I never thought it was something of the heart. I was feeling chest pains, headaches, uh, pain in my extremities. And all because when the heart pumps so fast, the rest of the body doesn't get enough oxygen, which sometimes causes other symptoms. Also, how quickly we forget what feels good feels like. Once you feel how good it feels good feels like, you don't want to go back to the old ways. Well, this is where God started to show me how this experience I had with my heart can look a lot like our Christian walk. Did you know the word heart appears in the King James Version more than 765 times? In the Bible, the word heart most often refers to the conscious being, the inner person. It refers to the mind, the will, the emotions. Our heart in this sense is the very center and the core is the nucleus of our being. The symbolism is appropriate. Our physical heart is a vital organ, which is essential to our physical life. In a way, it's the center of our physical being because it pumps to vital, vital blood to all the other organs throughout the whole body. When a heart stops beating, then life stops. So my question to you is, what is the nucleus of your life? Because from what you surround yourself with, your heart will beat. Your mind will think. Your will submits and your emotions react. If you think your life is out of control, you need to check the core. What is it that you're feeding? What is feeding you? What is your source? Everything in excess is not good. Too many beats are not good as too few of beats. They're not good either. God made the perfect, the perfect man's heart with a perfect number of beats so that the whole body could function perfectly. When we start getting pulled by accelerated emotions, you will start losing the feel good under Christ feeling. In the same way, when we come to Christ, there must be only one nucleus, one core. His presence must be the one that generates our thoughts, our will, and our desires. We are no longer manipulated by our will by our emotions, or at least we shouldn't be. There is a Holy Spirit that is pumping and beating at the rhythm of God. And if you stay with him, everything is going to be okay. The word of God is clear when it comes to the heart of man. I'm not talking about the physical heart, but about the center of our being where our, our will is. When a heart has not been given to God, 
or when a will has not been submitted to Christ, we get deceitful hearts. God is like an elect like that electro that they do that by it, God knows what's going on in your heart. He can see the inner parts of your being and know exactly what's wrong with it. You cannot hide it from God. Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10, it says, the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really know how bad it is? But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. Now, you know, you and I have made the decision to surrender our hearts to God. A heart without Christ will be judged by its actions. But that heart that has been submitted to God is a heart that beats and pumps the blood of the lamb that cleanses from head to toe. Jesus justified you and I and paid the price for any wrongdoing that we have done. When we accept Christ, there must be true repentance. Even we who are under the new covenant is very different than the covenant from our ancestors before Christ. The people that saw miracles, that people who walk in the presence of God in the day with a, pill, with a cloud and at night with, a, with fire, they abandon God. Just as today, there are people, there are Christians that have known God, but they have turned away and have distanced themselves from God. People that, are, that, that need to come back to repentance. People where their heartbeat didn't sink, didn't align with the beat of God. Jeremiah 5.23 says this, but my people have stubborn and rebellious hearts. They have turned away and abandoned me. You know what? It is dangerous to have a, die, a, a heart that is divided, a heart that have gotten out of, the, of God's rhythm. And I think we need to ask ourselves that question. Because Christians are not exempt from getting out of God's rhythm. Life can throw situations at you that out of the sudden, you're starting to beat the frequency of the world, the frequency of the troubles, the frequency of the diagnosis of a doctor, the frequency of what is on your bank account, the frequency of what you have seen in the news. But see, God is calling you back to hold on to faith and start beating at his rhythm. Matthew 12, 34 says, you brood of snakes, how could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. Brother and sister, my friend, listen to what you are speaking. If you listen the way you speak, you will know what's in your heart. Now, the most beautiful thing, maybe you're looking at it and you say, you know what? I'm really being very far away from God. But there is a beautiful promise that God will give you a new heart. And that's in Ezekiel 36, 26 and 27. It says, and I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put in, I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. You know, God is the one that puts that heart that responds to his frequency. He is the one that puts that heart for your heart to respond to his voice. That is why 
you may be in the middle of a storm. You may be giving a bad report, but your heart starts beating faith. Your heart start beating, I believe, God, your word. I believe, God, what you have said. And the situation in your life wants to start bumping, pumping, pumping heart. But God is there to calm you down, just like that pill that gave me, to bring my heart rate down as it was designed to be. He says, chill out, be calm, be calm, be quiet in my presence. Know that I am God. Know that whatever is going on right now that has your heart beating out of control, I am the one that brings it down. Give me your heart. I have a new heart for you, says the Lord. Acts 16, 14. I love this scripture because we need to start asking God to open our hearts to accept this word like he did with Lydia. It says one of them was Lydia from Tiatira, a merchant of expensive purple cloth who worshiped God. As she listened to us, the Lord opened the heart, her heart and she accepted what Paul was saying. My prayer is that God will open your heart for you to accept what the Holy Spirit is teaching us tonight. That you will accept the good report of the Lord. That you will accept the promises of God. That you will close your heart from anything that is not from God. And you will open your heart to receive, to be in the same frequency as God is. You know, perhaps you will tell me today that you don't feel that is any remedy for you. That you have hurt many people. You know, I'm going to share with you a testimony about two years ago when we went to Daytona Bike Week. I got the opportunity to preach or to share the good news with David Allen Coe. I didn't know who he was. He's 83 years old now, but he is an American musician. And for those of you that probably know his music, it's very rough. He had a very, very rough uh, life. And I have never before encountered somebody that felt that there was no hope for them, no hope. And how much I pray and I ask God, I was hoping this past week and I will get to see him. But he wasn't there. He wasn't on the place where uh, he usually uh, plays every bike week. And he wasn't there. And uh, for him, we need to pray like that it happens like Lydia, for God to open the heart to receive what God is speaking. And maybe you have a loved one, or maybe if yourself, where you feel you have done so much wrong in your life that you feel there is no hope. We always preach the good news thinking that everybody will receive it. But there's some that having the best gift of all in front of them will close their heart. The invitation is open. And no matter what kind of life you have had, if you come to Jesus, he will take you in. Psalm 51, 17 says, the sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, oh God. God will never reject you if you give your heart to him. God gives you a new hope, and it's a hope that will never disappoint you. Romans 5, 5 says, and this hope will not lead you to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. See, your heart may be rough. You may have had a life that seems there is no forgiveness for you. But it says that God will fill you with his love. God will forgive your sins. God will take you in 
All you have to do is just come to him. Come just the way you are. Galatians 5.22, it says, not only he will give you a new heart, but he will start giving you fruits from what he has deposited in your heart. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. All these things will be produced in your heart, in your core, in your soul, because it's not you, the one that lives in you, but it's Jesus, it's God himself. Now his nature comes and lives with you. And it's now your heartbeat. Your heartbeat is his beat. Ephesians 6, 6 says, try to please them all the time, not just when they are watching you. As a slave of Christ, do the will of God with all your heart. See, when you give God all of your heart, then the next thing that happens is that you want to do the will of God. It comes naturally because he lives in you. This is why when you see people suffering, you ache for them. This is why you want to help other people. You want to reach out. You want to tell others the good news. Why? It's because now you are in the same frequency of God's heart. You, you have an implant in you that came straight from heaven. And now that is pumping and producing fruit. And that's what you want to do for others. So ultimately, your hearts must desire salvation for the loss, that the people, the first thing is we got to love the people of Israel because God loved them first. And that we, we want to say, God, we want them to know you and for the wicked to become to you, Lord. Our hearts needs to be at his rhythm. And I close with this Romans 10, 1, it says, dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. See, our desire should be for people to be safe, for the people of Israel, for the wicked, for those that don't know Jesus, that should be our desire. So beloved, ask God to analyze, to examine your heart, to see what frequency you have been playing, what frequencies been beating in your heart. If your heart is going too fast, you will get exhausted and tired and will start affecting all other areas of your life. It is time to take a check to the one that is the owner of your heart and make sure that heart is pumping as his frequency. If you feel blessed with this message, I'm going to invite you to subscribe to YouTube, to our channel. And that you will share this message with other people. Encourage them to come closer to the Father's heart. May God bless you. I love you. Thank you for being with me. And we'll see you next week.